So it's 3.05, so welcome everyone. Thank you for joining DataCon LA 2021, and welcome to the Emerging Tech Track. My name is Joanna Perdomo, uh, your host, and our co-host today is Dolapo Kester, and together we'll be monitoring the chat and the Q&A for you during this session. Today we have our guest, Avinash Gundapaneni, and he's going to be talking about how to extract longitudinal trends of a brick and mortar brand's foot traffic. Uh, Avinesh is a creative and experienced data scientist with over eight years of academic and industry experience in the data science and analytics domain. He's the lead data professional at Medallia, where he conceptualizes designs and builds software as a service products that help businesses understand their markets and customers better and make data-driven business decisions. Before working at Medallia, he was with Sense360, a startup that Medallia acquired in 2020. At Sense360, he was one of the principal contributors to build robust and business-driven data products that enable companies to examine and organize their data with the goal of better serving their customers and consumers. Throughout his career, he served in different data science roles across different domains, including the pharmaceutical, automotive, and retail industries. Uh, I won't take up any more of his time, and I'll hand it off to the speaker. Thank you for being with us, Avinash. Thanks a, lot. <clears throat> Thanks a lot for the intro, Joanna. Thank you everyone for joining today. Today I'm gonna be talking about how to extract longitudinal trends of a brick and mortar brand's foot traffic. <clears throat> so, thank you for all joining. Like Joanna mentioned, I'm a senior data scientist at Medallia and I work in the data science team where we build products and metrics that are used by our clients and sales sales teams to uh, make business decisions and understand the market and understand the customers. Today, I will be talking about how uh, we built one of our models that helped us extract more accurate longitudinal trends of a specific metric that we track. In this specific scenario i'm talking about a metric uh, called foot traffic in in the in the generic industry sense it is just the number of people that visit a given store mall or location so it's how many people are visiting your brand in a given month or day it is it can be a proxy for your sales and also the focus is on being accurate in terms of trends longitudinally meaning over time here's a simple snapshot of why such a trend is more important uh, in terms of how we use it in our product. Here you, we are looking at McDonald's performance, for example, versus the market in a specific time, time frame. And we see that uh, the brand in question is doing better than the market benchmark. And we are using their year over year percentage growth as a metric that we uh, associate with growth. So in this way, we uh, control for seasonalities, we control and see how the brand is doing against market. And also over time, uh, being accurate longitudinally is very important in providing insights using a metric like this, building a product like this, and uh, driving business decisions. So initially, before I go into the metric, talking about how we build any metric that helps us understand the market or the customer behavior, uh, I need to talk about our panel. So the, all the data we have is uh, owned by the buyers and we track about uh, data from uh, 2 million users and we collect data from mobile phones and credit card transactions uh, of about 600 million visits per year. This is a proprietary panel, and we could use it for any uh, application or in getting any insight and share uh, any trends and understand any markets across uh, the US. So it is not limited to any specific client or it is not owned by our clients, the data that we have. This is all generated by the pipelines uh, built at Medallia. And uh, when I say uh, we have a panel, part of our bigger panel is, consists of apps. So we collect user location 
using uh, apps that lets us that that lets a user share their location with us with an intent to uh, for example it could be to take a survey or get some discount on some uh, or some coupons etc so this is a uh, uh, data shared with intent and with person uh, purpose and uh, with complete knowledge of the customer which is why we take because of uh, we collect data from a huge panel and a lot of users share their data with us we ensure we maintain privacy that involves three major major components one is ensuring consent that the, we all always ask the user to that we that we can collect the data and also keeping it private uh, we um, and also masking any sensitive data anything that is considered sensitive sensitive uh, we do mask the data and it, it's never collected at all so this is a little uh, overview on the importance that we give for privacy because all we are looking for here is a little sample of consenting and private data uh, keeping it private and masking sensitive data just a little sample of uh, pan of panel that, that let us collect some of the data that helps us build some of the metrics that i'm about to talk to you so given we have a user panel that is that we uh, co collect from wherever we can get the data from it bapa and it consists of several apps that make up the, the user panel uh, the challenge exists that the user panel can change over time extensively so in this scenario this is a simple example where uh, given my complete total user panel i split it up by different set of apps that make up over time uh, in a random simulation so here you can see that if you are comparing april to april it's a completely different set of apps this can induce building any sort of a metrics or products on top of this can induce some kind of trends that are not desirable uh, kind of trends that pop up within several subgroups and overall the trends would be different it is an example of a simpson's paradox at play that we'll be dealing with to make our metrics more and more accurate over time so in that sense the core problem here we are trying to solve is around sample bias in, in a sense and also trends induced by technological changes that we don't want over time that, that there is no way to completely avoid in advance or historically so if we think about the core question that we are trying to solve we are trying to solve accuracy over time so longitudinally we are tracking some trends of businesses visits to businesses and we want to make sure those trends are accurate so thinking about all the factors that can impact the trend we could categorize them into two major uh, buckets one is technological changes if an app joins or leaves our network it could impact our accuracy if uh, there is any os update to the mobile phones they like they that could impact uh, the, the way visits are being uh, recorded and that could impact our accuracy any changes in uh, sdk code that that is deployed on apps uh, any uh, improvements in technology could also cause um, our accuracy to go off because the visits can be accurate in in themselves but the longitudinal trend is dependent on all these factors and when we are comparing one uh, technology driven uh, visit to another technology driven visit uh, sample there can be biases and we could be reading them so these are all the technology re related uh, impacts that could impact your trend and then there are some real world changes like covid could impact your trend over time brand your actual brand performance some of the brands might actually be doing better that could be impacting your uh, trends and also in general industry trends like people are buying more chicken so your chicken brands stores see more visits for example and in this scenario these are the kind of trends that we want and these are the kind of trends that we do not want so that is the challenge here so there will be uh, trends and jumps and spikes and dips but we need to be sure that those are real and not induced by technology and that's exactly what 
our model should be aiming to remove. Now, go, taking a step further and talking about what, so I mentioned Simpson's paradox in terms of how our different samples uh, and subgroups could affect, change in subgroups could affect the overall outcome. Uh, just to get an over, simple overview of what I mean by Simpson's paradox, it's a, it, it basically reflects the fact that your perception of events can change depending on your viewpoint. For example, <clears throat> on the right left, you see your overall population and you see that your conclusion from this would be that age, age is positively correlated with the uh, score. But if you break down this to subgroups and you see uh, that this specific groups that is clustered based on a specific attribute and this one is clustered based on uh, and their specific attributes are actually internally showing the opposite pattern. Here you see that within this subgroup, the age is actually inversely related and within this it is inversely. Then how come overall it is, we are saying that it's positive. They, they, there is no paradox technically here. It's just the perspective that is changing. Uh, now I'm gonna, now that we understand what the panel is dealing with and uh, what kind of, uh, sample changes and biases could impact our overall trend. Now looking at one specific example here, uh, at a very high level, uh, boiling down to a simple example where we are tracking sales per million of a specific brand here. And we see that it is, this is what we see right now from our complete total panel. Okay, they are close to 90K per million, and then in March, they showed a jump and they're trending around 100K uh, in sales. And this is the year over year change. Based on this trend, we are now saying, hey, uh, in, in the recent months, you are showing almost 23% growth year over year. Now, this is where uh, there, is, there could be an issue that this trend might be infused by technology. And then when, when we check the real world data, like an estimate of sales or that either that market or that brand, this might seem 23% might seem very wild. Uh, let's assume that this brand in, 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 in terms of real world growth is pretty stable. It's not growing that way. So, and then, so that's a problem. Our data is telling this. And then we saw that in real world, this might not be, this is very less likely to be true. And then when we further dig into the data, this is basically what we see. This is again a boiled down simpler example. And we see that when we track two separate subgroups, meaning in this case apps, let's say our panel is made up of app A and app B. Uh, we see that within that, it is actually stable. So we see that this is hovering around the same level uh, under 110K and this is around 75K. And the year over year growth within each of those is actually pretty stable. It is around 0%, 0 to 10% here. So, but overall you see that they, we are inducing this trend. Why is that happening? It's because the app B, which tends to um, be low, reporting lower sales than app A for this specific brand in question, it left the network around February. And because that app left and now this constitute so all of our panel that kind of pushed the sales up because we are only basing it based on the users who tend to spend more on uh, on this specific brand now that's the problem in a very uh, in a very simple way because this could be handling happening in tenfold twentyfold multiple technologies multiple apps joining and leaving at the same time os changes sdk changes all at once but very boiled down version, this is this could be happening. Now, one solution is obviously to just ignore this, right? Ignore this and historically just use this. But again, that's not a solution that is upscalable, for example, because we cannot keep on looking at uh, and these changes and only use users that exists over two year time frame, because that way you won't have enough sample at all. So that, in that sense, for sample and also being able to uh, induce new technologies and be 
being more robust this is it is not a scalable solution to cut down on sample so in this case none of the standard weighting met methodologies also uh, apply here because there is no ground truth in terms of what the app network should be made of we had this one app left because of the contract ending and then we have this app now and this is our world this is our full network and there is no right or wrong about it so that's the challenge we faced in terms of uh, how to deal with longitudinal accuracy because right now this is not reliable and this metric uh, trend is kind of useless to make any interpretations further other than the fact that uh, checking what visits we can see exactly where something happened at a micro level but comparing it to comparing this may to the previous may we do not have a baseline there because this may consisted of a different set of users compared to this may and that's the biggest challenge here now going further that's where our longitudinal accuracy model comes into play so in this example i'm talking about how this model it takes the input of everything that we the trend that we just saw and then outputs a more accurate more reliable trend longitudinally in order to help uh, improve this accuracy so here you see uh, x uh, we are the model is, you, is defined as this function that fits x to y and x being the sales that we just saw the sales with that jump uh, that we just saw and why would be the final output of the model the goal is essentially to take out the technological impacts and only keep the real world changes that we just discussed defining uh, some simple terms initially uh, x delta x is change in x uh, from one point in time to another delta y is change in y from one point to another now we know we don't know anything about delta y that's what we need out of the model we know about delta x for example from here that this is this is the change from one point to another is what we are dealing with and it's it it's around this spot from feb to march is where this kind of went unreliable because this jump you see uh, in x from this point to another is actually induced by the fact that the app left and this is not a real world trend so in that sense uh change in x is not reliable but what is reliable is change in apps app traffic so the change within this so we don't know anything about how much what is the change from feb to march from this but we do we we are more confident in saying this change from feb to march is more more on the reliable side so within an app we are more reliable so that's what we we use so we use the changes within an app and then weight them by their size across the whole panel uh, and then aggregate those changes together to come up with a new change that we call okay, this is the delta y and this is what is more reliable uh, in this case b refers to a brand the sales of a brand so we are talking whenever we look at uh x or y it is in specific to a specific brand in this scenario so now this little uh transformation where we only look at changes within reliable sources and then aggregate them to get a total panel change now this panel change is much more reliable and stable than we uh, than the overall, than what we initially had now that we had these in, changes that are more reliable we just aggregate them over time it's a cumulative sum the last formula is a simple cumulative sum over time that gives you the current y which is more reliable so simply put you do not calculate for example in this example sales for a given month as it is what you do is you go back historically whatever time you time frame you are looking at let's say 2 years and then right from the first month in your window you you start looking at changes in sales from month to month month to month and overall only look uh, this model outputs the reliable changes from one period to another uh, once you have the reliable changes from time to time you just accumulate them and get your 
uh, actual metric, the total sales over time. In that sense, it is more reliable over time. Now, looking at how, going back to our problem, with this understanding of the model in hand. So this is what we have. And uh, over time, this is the problem we saw. So applying our new model on top of this, this is what you'll see. So what is happening here is at the bottom, here you see uh, the input to the model, that's the initial problem we have. This is the output Y. It is pretty similar till here. And what happens when, when this disturbance happens, our new model only uses the real reliable change and then adds it to the existing point, giving you a more stable trend over time. And year over year, we were saying 23% uh, before, which is not reliable. Now this new metric is back to 7%, which is a more uh, reliable number and a more accurate number in this uh, specific scenario. So I, that is the full example. I took a very simple case of apps, but going back to the model formula, this app can be anything. Uh, in this case, I, uh, specific case that I, I took, it, it, it is an app, but it can be any subgroup, any user cohort. So given your panel, the goal is to find that specific subgroup that you trust the most. Uh, in this case, it turned out to be an app. It could be a group of users that have a specific version of an OS. It could be a group of users on a specific SDK uh, that are more reliable. That is the part of the model that needs much more manual training. So that's, that's the actual work in this case. So what the most time consuming, most dirty, and uh, the most complicated uh, work to have a model that, that is working for the data in case, for the pipeline that you have, for the metrics that you are trying to build. So if you think about it, the full, the, the, the leftmost extreme is your full panel is treated as one big user cohort, right? Like you don't you apply this model at all. And that's when uh, you, that's where you have the baseline. And in order to get any improvement on it, you need to decide on the configuration and the split of your cohorts. It could be uh, by any combination. So in this specific case, uh, we could use an app, a user that is on a specific app and an SDK and an OS to be a part of a subgroup that is more reliable. And then an extreme case would be each user on their own, which, which is where you would be boy losing some samples while you're reading those trends and uh, it can lead to noise. And in terms of how do we validate this? So the goal is to pick the right cohort. And how do we validate it? That's, that's another big step and big challenge because there is no ground truth for everything that we want to track. Uh, like, because the, the metrics we are building are for, it could be for 200, 300 brands uh, across different industries. And uh, there won't be ground truth for all of these for, for you to get and uh, validate your model, whether it's improving accuracy or not. So that's where uh, it requires a lot of human effort and a lot of business insight in terms of putting a value on improvement of the model trying to understand if a specific tweak or if a specific new cohort is increasing the accuracy or if it is affecting it negatively. So that's where uh, it comes into play. And uh, any validation techniques uh, in this model depend on, on the first, on the first fold, they depend on uh, the ground truth that you can find. And then since that is limited, even though if you could get some, it would be very helpful. Since that is limited, another way to look at is uh, general industry trends, like uh, looking at the noise of year over year changes over time, whether they're getting more and more stable. Uh, and also you correlate changes to your network. Like you do know these are the few, uh, every month, these are the changes that are going on. Uh, on this month, I, there was an update to iOS 
and then this month there are some 10 new apps that joined your network and then you need to make sure that your the changes in the metric are not directly correlated to the changes in technology so this is again going back a little to the technology uh, impact so this is what we need to make sure so find metrics and correlations that tell you that your model has now uh, is now reduced has now now has now reduced the correlation between technological changes and the changes to your metric and that's when you will be more sure that real world changes are all that are impacting your metric <clears throat> now <clears throat> now this model can be uh, applied in uh, like i described not just in foot traffic so for i give an example of foot traffic it can be applied in any user panel any uh, database uh, it just needs uh, that specific context and that specific user cohorts uh, or apps, uh, like in this case, that you will need to decide that are right for your use case. But the, the main spirit of this model is to not rely on the overall panel changes because they can be induced by changes in technology. Now, how do you do that? You go to a specific subgroup where the technology is the same that and that specific subgroup will give you a, a change in metric that is more reliable and and then you you uh, take that back you you and then you accumulate it over time to eventually lead to a more stable trend over time that takes out the technological impact that essentially is how you solve this issue and get a more stable traffic and get a more stable uh, growth metric. And uh, that, that's the main uh, takeaway here. The biggest uh, gain here that you're getting here would be year over year trends are more accurate. And the, and the biggest amount of uh, work or, or human effort that goes into this model is uh, you would be doing several tests using different cohorts of combinations because that's the challenging part. You need to iterate and do several tests to decide for your pipeline, the way your pipeline is built and the way your uh, uh, data set is configured. You need to find you, the right set of cohorts for you where the technological changes are, are constant within that uh, cohort. Now, again, it is true that this problem will go away if, if you spend a lot of money and you have a huge sample that you can limit the technological changes but still you some of the changes first point would be that some of the changes are unavoidable and also uh, the you will be spending a lot more than you need which which is uh, again not a good uh, situation you want to be in so this is where this model comes into rescue, where the panel keeps on changing over time. There is uh, sample changes, sample bias, uh, and not just the that there is a bias, the, the bias nature itself changes over time, which makes it very difficult to have anything accurate longitudinally. So this model kind of tries to boil down to the uh, exact user groups that are stable and then extract those trends out to an overall panel that make your trends more reliable. The, this, I can always talk more about the formula, but uh, it, you can always reach out to me for any questions on this uh, over time. Now, I think we should open up for any questions uh, that have come up or Okay, thank you so much, Vinish. Uh, um, Vinish, yeah. it was great, a pleasure to have you and share some insights on uh, this idea of uh, longitudinal tracking um, trends in brick and mortars and making sure, extra you said extract longitudinal, so which means you are capturing things 
around um, through time, oh, okay. sequence of a series of time. Um, the question I have for you is, you mentioned something about the app and the SDK technology changing. Yeah. Many of the, do you have an aggregate of devices because apps are different and the data that you pull off from them from different devices, say an Apple phone or an, a Google phone. Yeah. Do you, is that part of the information that you gather? Is it, is that understood or is it something like any type of app device on, on how the app works on that device? Yeah, we do. So uh, it, it depends on the uh, on all the factors you mentioned, actually. So in this case, I gave a very simple example of an app changing over time. Uh, but that is one one part of it, of what changes in your network. But again, uh, this app can be from iOS or Android, uh, and it can be uh, on a different device. Uh, no within an ios device right that's what you're you're talking about yeah uh, yeah it it those things can impact if uh, it can be the device on which uh, the app is in it can be the os that it is running it can be the sdk that it is running on all of those can be impactful uh, that is where we need to decide exactly what works for you for for this uh, for your specific use case uh, and find the right uh, right valid right cohort of users that would uh, be right for your model okay and then then you do have um different um as as the i mean performance wise you know for some reason maybe people with iPhones are much of this person or do they have this um they're more in tune mm -hmm. to get this i mean because i'm trying to use the device itself as a behavioral thing Correct. but i'm not sure yeah so you, you it is true that uh, you will see uh, the visit accuracy itself being different for ios versus android for example uh, the way they use sensor the way they use location data the way they detect location when someone stops it four point when versus when they start moving again, all those little technology that uh, is in your device is important. So yeah, definitely the device and the OS plays in uh, detecting when a visit actually happened uh, and how it happened. Uh, and also to your point, uh, it also impacts in terms of an iOS user might be more likely to visit a certain store than Android, for example, right? So that can impact your longitudinal trend. So if, if over time, <clears throat> let's say the, right now you have uh, your, the panel that you're using uh, has is consists of 60% IOS, but last year, this month, it was only 20% IOS. Now, if you calculate a metric from this and that and lo look at the growth or change, it is impacted by, in this case, the technology change called platform, right? So that is also something this model will control for uh, when we train it uh, in this way. Yeah. Great. <coughs> well, thank you so much, Anish. Um, I wanted to see if others on the session can, you know, if you, if you have any questions, um, it's a very interesting um, concept, and I, I truly appreciate the effort because I know this must take a lot of, uh, I mean, the granularity of being of, of the idea of tracking people's involvement or people's engagement at, at brick and mortar stores. If you, yeah. example, you gave McDonald's, for example, and how often traffic goes to that certain place in comparison to somewhere else, if it's Burger King or some Jack in the Box or something like that. Yeah, um, it can be very, very detailed. Uh, like we are talking about, uh, let's say McDonald's, right? We are talking about food service industry. Uh, there are McDonald's stores all over, Burger King stores all over. Uh, so we track uh, people's food traffic around these store locations across the country. And we know the exact time when the traffic increases or decreases for a specific McDonald's versus Burger King. So the application is huge. Uh, we could uh, specifically look at a specific DMA 
uh, or a specific city uh, uh, and compare uh, a specific time like in los angeles during breakfast who is doing better uh, you who like mcdonald's is gaining visits in breakfast is it losing to burger king or is it losing to chick fil a uh, so it can be that granular and very insightful for making uh, business decisions oh great great thank you so much um i think we have a few more minutes and i'll just wait for a few minutes for people to chime in and see if uh, i believe just give me one quick second yeah about five minutes if anyone would like to chime in um, well once again i would like to thank you again vinesh i mean this is a pleasure to hear from you and thank you for the insight and i think um one of this most of what you mentioned nowadays since we're all and i mean we're human and uh, we want to get things from a store or from to a grocery store or a fast food restaurant i mean most of those things we just walk in and and the restaurant doesn't know that the activity of how we the interest we have for that restaurant or place but you can track it on the back end by just like the incentives that you give consumers and you know the consent that you get to kind of do this tracking which is a great deal yeah, <clears throat> yeah. especially um uh, talking about the restaurant industry again um in, uh, again the same example mcdonald's might know what's for example it could estimate what's going on within its store uh, but it wouldn't know what is going on in its competitors uh, stores so that's where this data will be very useful because this is not specific to any brand this is general population data so the behavior can be uh, very detailed uh, for you can understand very detailed behavior of your competitors which will be of great value. Yes, yes. Well, thank you. I will just wait for a couple of minutes and uh, if anyone has any questions, I'll probably get them before we call it, um, close the session. Thank you. Well, I don't want to take much of your time, Mr. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for your time and, and thank you for joining us for DataCon LA 2021. Uh, we hope to see more of you. And for our attendees, thank you so much for attending this session. And if you want to know more about Vinesh, we can, uh, there's some details on the schedule um, and also based on uh, the schedule that we have, we'll be posting more details of the of the uh, speaker, Vinesh, and uh, for you to know more about him or if you have any further questions. So, Vinesh, thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you all. Have a good day.